Hello, Dr. Zakir with you, Senior ENT Consultant. So, the topic is Acute Sialolithiasis. So, before going into the main topic, let me give you a small introduction. The saliva which is produced daily, it is produced by three important salivary glands. So, a small introduction will, may, will help you to understand better. We have three sets of salivary glands. The parotid gland, which is seen just below the ears, in front and below the ears. Then you have the submandibular gland, which is just below the mandible. And the sublingual gland, which is below the tongue. The total, so same pair, uh, set of uh, salivary gland, you have on the other side also. Now, the saliva secreted from all this, totally per day, it secretes about approximately up to 1.5 liters. And the saliva which is produced by the salivary glands, it's different. And as when the, the, in the saliva which comes from the parotid, it's more watery. So in medical terms, it's called a serous. And that which comes from the sublingual, it is more mucus. Means it is thick. And the saliva which comes from the submandibular gland, it is mixed type. So, and the, the, the calculus or the stone formation is most common in the submandibular gland. I will tell you a few reasons for that. So, let us come to the main topic, that is acute sialolithiasis, which means formation of stones or calculus in the ductal system or the gland proper of the salivary gland. Now, it is more common in men and more so in the middle age group and among the three glands, it is very common in submandibular and approximately about 80 percentage. So, why it is common in submandibular gland? One is the saliva which comes from the subendabular gland is different from that which comes from the parotid and sublingual. So, what are the differences? The saliva which comes from the submandibular gland, it is more alkaline and it has got more concentration of calcium, phosphate, organic matter and the enzymes and low amount of carbon dioxide also. So, these are the differences. Not only that, if you see some mechanical reasons, the submandibular gland, this is the submandibular gland and this is the duct. Submandibular, the submandibular gland is at a lower level and the duct it opens at a higher level. And the duct, the gland and the duct is at a higher pressure too. The duct has a longer course, it is little tortuous and the orifice or the opening of the duct is narrower than the duct. So, these are the mechanical reasons why you have more calculus formation in the submandibular gland than the other two glands. Now, coming to the composition of the gland of the calculus, it, it constitutes of calcium phosphate, calcium carbonate and calcium bicarbonate. The other salts being salts of magnesium, zinc and other organic material like glycoproteins and mucopolysaccharides. It does, the calculus can be single or it can be multiple. It can be single round one or it can be multiple or it, sometimes it can be irregular shape, but usually it is found to be round. The size it varies from 2 millimeter up to 2 centimeters. Now coming to the complaints. The main complaint of the patient will be and it is related to uh, food. So, whenever he thinks about the food or he gets the smell of it or when he sits to, to take his food, he gets severe pain just below the mandible area, the upper part of the neck and it may be associated with little swelling also. This is what I am saying in the early stages. So, when we examine the patient, the upper part of the neck just below the bone the mandible, there may be a swelling and when we palpate just below the tongue, where we can palpate the duct, we may be able to palpate the 
calculus of the stone if it is there in the submandibular gland duct but if it is in the gland it will not be, we will not be able to appreciate much now coming to the investigations how to uh, come to, how to uh, coming to the main investigations which includes explain x-ray lateral view or orthopendomogram this is mainly done by the uh, done in dental centers so if you see here you can find a calculus the single round calculus can be seen in this the next investigation we you can we can diagnose with any one of these investigations the ct scan can help us if you, as you can see you, you see two stones on the right side ultrasound also this is a simple non invasive technique which will help us to diagnose it will tell us uh, whether the gland is enlarged or not the presence of calculus or stone whether it is single or multiple and what is the measurement how big is a stone and we have associated so, uh, uh, swelling in the gland or any infection or any abscess formation also silogram also can help us but usually we don't do it just for completion sake i have included in this the new technique of ct scan the 3d ct scan also can help us to come to a diagnosis now suppose we leave this condition as such and we don't treat it we just treat it once what will happen this can go into complications like it can go into abscess formation or infection first it will start with infection that which we call as saladinitis and this if antibiotic is not been taken properly not been taken care of it can lead to abscess formation and if it repeats it becomes recurrent it can grow go into chronicity these are the two complications now coming to the treatment so treatment per se it depends upon whether the stone or the calculus it's in the the position whether it's in the the duct the salivary gland duct or whether it's in the gland proper not only that the size of the uh, calculus also suppose it is in the duct and it is very near to the orifice we can uh, manually we can just milk it out slowly by pressure uh, manual pressure or applying pressure over the uh, duct and slowly trying to push it out nearer to the orifice and milking it out if the size is smaller and near to the the stone is calculus is near to the duct that is one or we can do lithotripsy where you we just try to make it uh, it is made into multiple small small pieces broken down into small pieces and it will be flushed out the third technique is saladinoscopy where we put in an endoscope and we visualize the stone whether it's the duct or in the gland near to the gland and with a special technique we can completely remove uh, remove the calculus now suppose the calculus is in the gland or the stone is in the gland and the patient is symptomatic means the patient is complaining of uh, pain in that case there is no other go other than to remove the whole gland excision of the whole gland so this is how we manage silolithiasis and one more advice is we have to drink lot of water dehydration is not good for these conditions thank you so much